Hey guys, Tamberly Puddles here. After the Tamarin banner and pulling Tamarin, I went ahead and I uh, compiled a bunch of information about the character. And since I already had it as personal research, I figured I'd go ahead and make a guide on the character. So I'm going to kind of go through a couple things. I haven't done any character guides for this game yet, and I plan on making more. Uh, the structure is going to be pretty much consistent, and we're going to run through a pretty basic um, overview of the character, their skills, equipment, uh, and content uses. So yeah, let's get into the guide. Alright, so starting off, I'm going to go ahead and say Tamarin is probably one of the top five characters in the game. No, she's not a damage dealer, so you're not going to be using her much for that. But aside from dealing damage, she is a jack of all trades that fills more roles than I think any other character in the game. Now, she's not the best at any of these roles, but she's fantastic at all of them, which makes her uh, pretty much a no-brainer. So her S3 does start with a really long cooldown, but her abilities kind of help mitigate this in a interesting way so her s1 attacks an enemy pretty straightforward and then heals the lowest health ally it's not a huge heal but for a character who's just attacking to also heal is a little useful obviously right uh, the soul burn greatly heals everyone on your team it's still not actually a massive heal but it's pretty effective and is pretty good at getting you out of some weird situations now every time she uses her skill one She's going to go ahead and decrease the cooldown of her S3 by an extra turn. So instead of just the one turn reduction for the turn that you take, she's actually going to reduce the cooldown by two turns. Tamarin Skill 2 is an AoE heal that restores health to your allies proportional to the max HP of Tamarin. Uh, this ability will also reduce the total cooldown of your S3 by two turns. Part of what allows Tamarin to be such a good jack of all trades is that she actually has five abilities instead of the usual three. So her skill three gives her the ability to transform, altering her skill one and her skill two. Not just giving them slight bonuses, but like actually changing what the ability does uh, almost entirely. So she basically, you activate the S3 after it's a long cooldown because it actually starts full cooldown. You don't get to use it at the beginning. Uh, you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna transform, and for three turns, she's gonna turn into her idle mode. During her idle mode, her S1 and her S2 are completely different abilities, and after transforming, she dispels, actually before, I'm sorry, before transforming, she will dispel all of the debuffs on your entire team. Just going off those two abilities, you might be a little confused as to why Tamarin is actually so broken, because so far she kind of looks like a semi-generic healer who gets to attack and heal on her S1, which isn't really that impressive, but as soon as she transforms, she turns into a completely different character that has way more versatility and power. So her S1 stops just being a little attack, and you actually turn it into an attack that's AoE to all enemies, and has the ability to dispel all enemy buffs and triggers a dual attack from the ally with the highest attack. Now, so her S3 will dispel all of her debuffs and all of her team's debuffs. And then you can S1 and actually remove all buffs from the enemy. So she's both a dispeller and a cleanser already. She's filling two extremely important roles and pretty easily, right? Her S2 doesn't do any damage when you transform, but what it does do is give an attack buff and it CR pushes your entire team by 30% CR and is a heal. So the diversity of Tamarin's abilities allow her to be a dispeller, a cleanser, a healer, a CR pusher, and an AoE team buffer, which is extremely powerful in one package. She saves you multiple character spaces on your team by just running her, right? She can fit two, maybe even three characters worth of roles into one team slot, allowing you to diversify your teams for endgame content, which is really important considering how restrictive endgame content is with what's required for your team to come. As far as item sets go, Tamarin's actually pretty one-dimensional. So you want a speed set like most healers in the game, mostly because the ability to heal more often and to take more turns is important. Um, it also abuses her pretty high base speed of 102 or 108 post awakening. So you basically just get your S3 up as quickly as possible. You want to go as fast as you can. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and then you want a health or a defense set for extra tankiness. Or if you're in really like late game PVP, you might want to throw in an immunity set when speed becomes a little bit less relevant and you really just need her to survive debuffs long enough to get her S3 active. 
Now, what I think makes Tamarin's itemization so interesting is her ability to abuse so many different artifacts, right? So she's already a jack-of-all-trades that fits onto multiple niches and onto multiple team compositions. Now, you can actually expand the breadth of team compositions that she fits onto and the amount of niches she fills with different artifacts. So things like Rod of Amaryllis that are going to allow you to heal for even more than you normally would on four-fifths of your turns, roughly. I think that's what the math works out to. Um, can make her an even more powerful healer than she already was. Celestine is another powerful choice on Tamarin. Uh, it's going to allow you to heal on the turns that you wouldn't normally be able to heal using your S1 when you're transformed in idle mode. Uh, it'll also trigger when you use your S1 outside of idle mode. This just gives you extra healing if you're lacking what you feel to be the necessary amount of healing to clear whatever content you're doing, or if the content like Long Labyrinths or Abysses requires just a little bit extra. Say you don't really need the healing. Say you're more worried about your dispelling on your S3, or you're more worried about getting that attack buff up as quickly as possible in a hunt or something. Well, healing with some of the other artifacts isn't really going to be that useful, but you can actually use Megara's Tome to cycle through your abilities more quickly by boosting your CR because she has a bunch of abilities that don't attack. So when you use your heal, you can actually push yourself forward, or when you buff, you can push yourself forward. And Megara's Tome helps you cycle through your abilities much more quickly, making her a more effective dispeller and buffer if that's what your team comp is calling for. Say specifically that the hunt you're running is something like Banshee 11, where you're going to be dealing with a lot of debuffing. Uh, Wondrous Potion Vial is a good option, especially if you're taking too long to get your S3 online, even with Megara's Tome. Then you can actually opt for a Wondrous Potion Vial to go ahead and help with some of the dispelling and to help prevent her from getting silenced so that her S3 is still available on Banshee. Um, aside from that, there is a budget artifact option for all of you who don't have a bunch of five or four star artifacts. You're going to be looking... Uh, do I not have one at the moment? I do not have one. You're looking for a prophetic candlestick. This is also going to help you cycle through your abilities and make sure that you can get your S3 online more quickly. It also pushes your heals up, uh, which obviously makes them faster and helps your character. Um, I don't think this is the best option, but again, if you don't have any five or four star artifacts like the ones we talked about, it's definitely a powerful option for Tamarin. Next, I just kind of want to briefly touch on Mulligoras. Uh, it's pretty straightforward with Tamarin. So unlike a lot of characters that are going to require a plus 15 investment, so you max out all of their abilities or get really close, you know, just so that they do what they need to do, she pretty much only needs a six Mola investment on her skill three. So it's pretty straightforward, right? Her abilities, her S1 and her S2, are going to reduce the cooldown of her S3 by two turns, but it has a nine turn cooldown. So no matter what, you're going to have to wait five turns to use her S3. Now by reducing the cooldown by one, you turn that nine into an eight, and that's an even number. Now you can use her S3 after four turns. So basically you're just picking up an extra turn. Um, her S1 only increases damage from Mulligoras. This is useless. I would really advise not putting any Mulligoras in here. If you're going to be using Tamarin for pretty much all content, and you plan on just having her around all the time, and you're in late game content, and you just have Mulligoras sitting around that have literally no better use, it's actually not a bad idea to plus 5 or maybe even plus 6 uh, her S2. Now, I think it's a little unnecessary. This is by no means mandatory and is pretty much only a good idea if you're, again, using her for everything and you have a bunch of Mulligoras lying around. Um, up to five, I think, is pretty easy to justify. I don't know if the Mulligora Go is a good idea and the Epic Catalyst is and the Mulligora Go is definitely too much. Um, but that's pretty much it for Mulligoras. She's very straightforward. You're just going to have to get these eight archers visions and these six Mulligoras and go ahead and get her S3 at plus one. Now, for such an interesting and complex character, the uses of her in PvE content are actually really straightforward. So she's, she's good in everything, uh, basically is the gist of it. If you're in raids, or you're in hell raids, or you're in labyrinths, or you're in hunts, or you're in late game story content or you're in literally anything pve wise she's good in all of it she's actually even used on auto banshee 11 teams where you wouldn't expect her to be used solely because she's such a good buffer and dispeller and dispelling against banshee is so valuable so she's one of the very very few characters who are fire typed that i would recommend bringing on banshee 11 or even banshee 11 auto
Tamarin's great, right? And everything seems perfect. What could possibly go wrong? Well, Tamarin has a little bit of a problem in PvP. The cooldown on her S3 is just too long. Um, she's actually borderline unusable uh, against a lot of the defense teams, especially since they're cleave teams that are looking to go first and kind of just kill you. You're never going to get your attack buff up. You're never going to be able to dispel the debuffs from someone like a Dizzy. Uh, unless you actually have Iseria. Iseria and Tamarin combined take Tamarin from a really mediocre and not very good arena character or Guild Wars character to one of the most potent offensive combos in the game. Iseria's ability to let you S3 on turn 1 and get your important skills up so that you're set up to either go right after a Dizzy and dispel all of her debuffs or set up an early attack buff or dispel your opponent's buffs if they went before you and basically restabilize the match depending on what you need to do uh, is kind of gross. This kind of makes immunity sets unnecessary if you have Isirian Tamron right because the ability to cleanse on turn one allows you to deal with some of the big problem characters that you're having to run immunity against again like Dizzy and allows you to gear your PvP team for more damage so she becomes strong Isiria's innate defense break that's guaranteed and her ability strip go really well with Tamron's ability to automatically give your cleavers or your damage dealers like a single target DPS the ability to get an attack up and just crush the opponent with ridiculous amounts of damage. Now, when we're talking specific team comps in PvE, Tamron's very straightforward. You're basically going to be replacing some of the Soul Weavers or maybe your AoE attacker. Um, so she'll fit pretty well into any DPS team. So any team that would be good in Banshee that needs an attack buffer, you pretty much slap her on the team. Uh, any Banshee 11 team that needs more dispelling or an attack buffer, you just slap her on the team. Uh, any team that's good in raid that needs a healer, a dispeller, you just slap her on the team. It's very straightforward. Uh, things are a little bit more complicated in PvP, but even then, not really. So she's basically mandatorily put on a team with Isuria. I don't, I can't think of any exceptions off the top of my head where she would be a valuable pick without Isuria on the team. So Tamarin, Iseria, and then you're going to want to pair with either two very strong single target DPS characters or you're going to want an AoE cleaver and a single target DPS. Um, the best and highest ranked team running Iseria Tamarin in PvP ranked at the moment is A. Vildred, Baikin, uh, Tamarin, Iseria. Now obviously not everyone has A. Vildred and Baikin. Um, but these characters are basically optimal because A. Vildred gives you the ability to A. Carry a team all on his own, which almost no other character in the game does, unfortunately. Uh, but the ability to do large amounts of AoE damage, Baikin functions as a strong CR pusher and high single target DPS. There's basically no other character that fits as perfectly into this role as Baikin. Uh, a second choice would be a challenger dominal. As a third choice, I would probably consider running just any really good single target DPS. Um, a decent budget comp, if you're a player and for some reason you have Tamara and Iseria but like no other 5 stars, um, or you have Tamara and Iseria but you don't really know how to put a team comp together but you have a lot of the free to play stuff, for single target DPS you can actually replace Baikin with Lorena, and for AoE DPS you can replace uh, A. Vildred with the Church of Eros Axe, or Axe God or whatever you want to call him. Uh, and this is a pretty potent team that should easily get you to master or above uh, with little to no effort solo just due to the power of the team. That pretty much wraps up the Tamarin Guide. If you guys enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate a like or a subscribe. It means a whole lot. Um, if you have anything to add, if I forgot anything, if you have any cool team comps that you've liked playing around with Tamarin in either PvE or PvP, or you just in general have anything you want to add to the video, uh, be sure to leave a comment. I like to respond to everyone, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys have a good day.